I want to try this sort of off-the-cuff video just to show you an example of making a game. So, sort of to show you the workflow of making a game and to run down all of the stuff I've been teaching up until now before we go into the built-in functions that are inside GameMaker. So we're just going to make a very simple space shooting game um, along the lines of Space Invaders. Um, in fact, I've got one alien prepped for Space Invaders, so we'll bring him in first. So I'm going to create a new sprite. I'm going to name him Sprite Enemy, since he's going to be the only one. And we're going to do this with um, a load function. Or actually, I'm going to go into Edit. And from here, I'm going to load from strip, because I actually created a strip from him. So either one of these will do, because we're not worried about overwriting a existing any of our existing frames. We don't have any yet. And I just threw it on my desktop here, and I've got this enemy strip. So I've got two images, because this will be my animation. So I have two images. I have two images per row, because there's only one row. I already know because I've made these myself that the width is 64 and the height is 64. I give a lot of padding. There's no offset at all. So none of this is going to be applicable, but I'll say okay. So there we go. So here's the animation done really fast, but here it is at a tenth of the speed. So there we go. We got a cool little enemy guy that we're going to use. And we will make his origin at the dead center of the sprite. And we'll check his collision. Now this collision box that is has been created here, we'll zoom in a little bit. See how it's bigger than this frame, and that's because this frame sticks out a little bit. Um, it's usually better since these are, um, you want to use your bounding boxes for collisions, um, for objects that hit you, or, you know, colliding with a wall. Usually in the case of enemies, you want an enemy's bounding box to be uh, about the same size or even larger or whatever, so that when a bullet collides with the enemy, you don't feel cheated when it like just skins by him. You want that to be very, very um, known to the player, very exact. So I'm, I think for this, I'll just leave it as is, just because if I shrank it down by this little bit... Um, Oh, you know what? Here, let's let's do it anyway. Let's do it manual. We'll keep it as a box. We'll say six. No, actually, it's four pixels inside. So there we go. So we'll add four pixels to move this bounding box uh, eight pixels in. And then we need to move the right four pixels down. So let's go 55. And there we go. So this will encompass the whole body of the first frame and leave these little bits dangling out. But the player should be okay with that. Okay, so we'll say that guy is done and let's create another one but this time we'll just create a sprite for the player I'll hit edit to start a new sprite I'm gonna use this new page icon to create a new sprite and we'll make him 64 by 64 because that's what the enemy size is and I'm gonna double click right there bring this in so you guys can see it Zoom in a little bit with my scroll wheel. Um, I don't know if I need a pixel grid. So let's just go with... Um, I'll draw them in white. Just like... Actually, I will use a pixel grid. You know what? I'm going to use Control r to open up my grid options. And I know it's 64 by 64, so I should probably pick a, f a factor of 64 some sort of multiple actually I guess it is factor and I'm gonna go with um, 8 so my grid will be 8 and I'm gonna use exclusive or just because it makes the colors pop better and snap to grid won't be necessary because we're just drawing pixels so there we go so we can see it popping out the white against the dark gray I just want to use this for centering my object um, this is the center right here. I can just kind of eyeball that. Uh, let's make my brush a little bigger. Or I don't know. Either way, let's draw a terrible looking... I'm using a mouse and I'm used to a tablet. A graphics tablet. So... 
It won't be... Or I guess it should be precisely center. Yes, so we're going to do three... Yes, let's do three. Unfortunately, in this version, uh, they haven't implemented it yet. I, I still have to go back to the um, eraser. There. I'm going to go pure hard on that. You still have to go and click on the eraser icon to erase. Uh, in later versions, you'll be able to use left or right click. You can set these up as, a, as like an alpha to erase. Uh, but for now, you can only paint colors with your left and right click. So you do have to keep switching tools. Kind of a bummer, I know. But uh, yeah, I think for the base here, let's just throw in a simple body. And uh, yeah, so that's really ugly. That's going to be my little guy. That's the guy who shoots. <laughs> no animations, no nothing. Totally fine. Um, it's probably bad just because we're working in powers of two here to leave this as three and three to make six. So I'm going to add one more line on either side. So this makes it, when it's mirrored, it'll be eight, but it's four on one side, four on the other. So that when it shoots a bullet, the bullet will be eight pixels wide. And we will center this so we can tell the bullet to come out centered as well. And now for my mask, I'll probably get rid of the top by eight pixels. Whoops. I mean, add to it. The bounding box is moving inward. Um, no, some more. So there we go. So now the bounding box is only going to encompass the body and not the gun part. Um, just in case in this game, I don't think I'm going to add enemy fire this is just to show you an example we don't want the enemy fire to touch the tip and uh, have the player die because that just seems unfair it should be the bulk of the body so now we can create objects for these sprites so I'm gonna create an object and I'm gonna call it obj and this is just gonna be enemy and then I'm gonna set the sprite to enemy he'll be nice and visible um, other than that, he's fine for now. And let's set up the object for the player. And we're going to say object player. All right. So let's also create a room. There we go. Let's call this something like room game. I'm not going to have a lot of menus here. We can probably keep it at this size and it'll be fine. Um... I'm going to draw a background color, so that's good. And I'm going to draw it black to give it that space feel. Pretty lame. Uh, the views we won't deal with because we're just going to keep it the same view. I don't think we need to like zoom in or anything for this game. I'm not going to go through absolutely everything I previously taught, but I just want to show you an example of the workflow. Or at least an example that, you know, everyone has their own kind of workflow. So I'm going to go to the objects and add my player and we'll keep him at the bottom of the screen and then we'll add some enemies. I could do this with code for sure. I could add the enemies with code, but for now let's just add the enemies ourselves. I'm just clicking and then holding and dragging the enemy somewhere. All right. So uh, is he off center? Yeah. There we go. Nothing fancy here, just that's it. Those, that's what we're going to deal with. Now, what I've forgotten already is we are going to need a bullet. So let's have a sprite for our bullet. And we'll do uh, a new one. Now, we know it's going to be 8 pixels wide. And we should probably at least double that. So let's go 16. That's going to be the whole image. And I'm just going to use the paint bucket and paint it white. And then we're going to center it so we can call upon that later. This should already have, I didn't look at it, but this should already have a perfect box. Because it is a perfect box. It's a rectangle. It's fine. So this actually needs to have an object as well. So this will be object bullet. It'll have the sprite for bullet. And we're all good. Okay, so let's decide what happens in our game. Well, we want our player to move. That's step one. And we want him to be able to move left and right, but not up and down. There are many ways to do this, but I'm going to do it uh, a really event-heavy way, just so you see 
all the different events you can use and how to use them. So I'm going to right click here in the events panel and I'm going to say add event and I'm going to say if keyboard just keyboard because we want the player to be able to hold down the keyboard this means if keyboard key is being held so if the player is holding down left he moves left he's holding down right he moves right not if he presses or releases because then it'll only move you know so many at a time it'll be like that 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 stuttering so let's do that and let's just say it's the left arrow key so there we go so if the player holds down the left arrow key we're gonna throw in some code two ways to do this one grab drag put it into here let me close that it's gigantic from the last time I did this or I found out you can just right click on it two ways to add code to your game or at least the code window let's shrink this down because it is way too large for what we need and I'll try to fit it into our workspace if I can grab it there we go so remember this is just when the player holds left well first thing I'm going to do is use triple slash that's game makers comment code for titling this action for the event so we're gonna call this move left something simple we don't really need to go fancy with that particular title so if player is holding down the left key we want to manipulate the object what we want to do is manipulate the x-axis that's the one that goes horizontal left and right so we want the x variable of this object and the zero marker of a room is at the top left corner that means that the zero position for x is on the left and then it increases to the right and the zero position for y is at the top of your room and it increases going down your room a little confusing because we always think higher the number it should go up but y will go down the room <laughs> as it increases in value so when we hold left we want to go left left goes towards zero so we're decreasing so we got our minus sign because we're decreasing and we want to do minus equals well we want it to really just be some sort of value some sort of speed um, so this will tell the game like how many pixels the object will move each step let's just say four here's where we kind of get into um, something called magic numbers anytime a number is just thrown into your code like this with no explanation it's called a magic number because it seems to be doing something magical really it, you want to be able to explain your code in plain English it should be like reading not like doing math so it might be better in this case to save this for now and we'll say when this object is created we can put in a bunch of creation code for this particular object so we'll call this initialize, but for short I'll just put in it. That's just what I do. I could put any if I really want to, or the full word initialize. This is where we're going to just initialize some variables for this particular object. So we're going to have an object, um, we're going to have a variable for this object called speed, and I'm just going to shorthand it to SPD. Now the only reason I'm doing that is GameMaker already has, as you can see it's red, already has a built-in variable for speed. I don't want to use that variable, so I'm going to use my own with SPD. I'm going to make it equal 4. Now this is also good because if you reference speed many times in your code and then later you want to change the value, you just go right to that initialize code block and change the value. And it just changes it for any other instance of that particular code. So we can hop back into left. This was the one that was accidental. Let's delete that. Okay, we'll hop back into move left. Now we can change this to just say speed. So now we know our object's x position will minus equal speed. That means it'll take its current x position, minus it by the speed, and then keep doing that. It'll keep updating its current position and minusing it. So it's like, it's it will look like it's moving to the left, obviously, just like that's how animation works. So we'll just leave that nice and simple as is. And now we'll do the same thing for going right. So we'll give this a title. We'll say our x position. Now this time it's plus, because we want to go we want to increase in value so that's going to the right and we're also going to do it by speed see it's much easier to read especially if I wrote the word speed but game maker already has that so already I mean not much has happened let's run the game and see if we can at least move our ship 
Now, I haven't changed the animation, so they're just going to freak out like that. But there we go. I can move left and right. Now, of course, I can go off the screen. We, we'll probably get to that. But I can move left and right. So that's great. He feels really slow. So let's give it another kind of power of two. Kind of like we'll give it eight. See if that helps. Anyway, let's sh let's let's create a fire button. We want to shoot at the enemies. So let's add an event, and we're going to choose our shot. Now this we don't want to be held down because we don't want to just constantly, constantly, constantly fire, right? So we want it on either key press or key release. Um, it really depends on on what you're doing in your game. Sometimes it's appropriate for on press and sometimes it's appropriate for on release. I think for this I'm going to do key press and I'm I'm not really a fan of the space bar for shooting but I'm gonna use it anyway for simplicity because it's right here. So we'll say press space. So anytime the player presses space we'll create a bullet. So let's do that. Here's our code block. I'm gonna title create bullet and here's where we're getting to a we're gonna get into a game maker function. This is going to be instance. We get our helpful drop down, but what we're really looking for is create. We're going to create an instance. But now Game Maker wants to know a little bit about it. Well, where do we want it to appear? Well, let's say we want it to appear just for now at my player's X position and my player's Y position. This is going to reference our origin point. So this means that the origin point of the bullet will sync up with the origin point of our uh, player sprite. What, I'm, what I mean, let me just tell it to take our object bullet. Really nice that we have the drop down for this too. So that's what's going to be created when I press the space button or space bar. This right here is what I'm referring to. This origin point, this 32 and 32, right there. So that means the bullet will sync up right there. Now we don't have any code for the bullet to move yet, so let's just hop into our game. I'll, I'll play it one more time, and I'll create a bullet by pressing space, and you'll see where it appears. So here I am. So if I press space, see? It appeared under me because that's its origin point syncing up with my origin point, because I typed put it at my player's X and Y. Now we don't want that. That's weird. We might not want it to start inside. Um... So, I don't know, we're going to have to figure out, we can either do this more professionally, or we can just do it by the number. Well, we know the center is 8, and we know, so it's, it's 8 pixels away from the top, and we know the player here is, I think we found out, also 8. So, here's what we're going to try. When we press the space bar to create this bullet, we're going to put it at the Y position of our player... But we want it to be 16 pixels higher. Now, if you remember, going toward the top of the screen is decreasing a number. So that's a minus. We're decreasing it, and we want it to decrease by 16 pixels. Now, of course, that's, that's another magic number, and we probably shouldn't do that. But for now, we'll leave it, and we'll just run a test. So this should appear right at the top of the barrel of the gun, which it didn't. <laughs> uh, it looks like we needed eight more pixels. And that's why I didn't have this magic number set in stone. So we'll increase this by 8 to 24. And I don't have to actually hit save. If I hit play, Game Maker will save, compile everything for me for this test. Um, so there we go. So it appeared right at the top. Perfect. Now let's make the bullet travel. So let's give the bullet a speed as well. So in our create event, this is when the bullet is first created. Something's going to happen, and we're just going to initialize some variables. And we're going to give it a speed of its own. So it gets its own variable called speed. And let's also give it 8. Sure. And then we want to use the step event, because we want the bullet to move always. Step events, if you remember, it's what's happening all the time. It's every frame, every step, it keeps going. So we're just going to choose the regular old step event. And in our code, we're going to say, like, something like, um, move bullet. Sure. It's fine. Now, similar to how the player was moving on the x-axis, we want the bullet to move on the y-axis. And we want it to move up, so that's decreasing in value. And we want it to move at speed. And now you can see how that's really similar to our player. And that's good, because it, it, 
it shows that it's really easy to read, you know, it, it falls in line with the rest of our code, it's great. So now if I shoot my bullet, there we go. I can move left and right and I can shoot my bullet. Now, ah, I can shoot really fast. We'll get to that in a sec. But either way, we've got our bullet moving. Good. Now, let's do the collision for it. So, we've got our enemy here. And we'll just say it's just one hit. Nothing, nothing fancy. One hit kills him. So, we're going to say collision. So, we're going to decide what it's colliding with. Well, if the enemy collides with the bullet, what's going to happen? Now, there are two ways to do this. One really quick lazy way is in main one, right there, that, that recycle bin, is destroy instance. So the bullet will go away. Or sorry, the enemy will go away when the bullet hits it. But we don't want to do that. We want to be a little more advanced. We want to put more code. So we'll just type in death. Because that's what's going to happen here. And we're going to use the actual code for it, which is instance. If I can type, instance destroy. And this is a function, so we need parentheses, even though we don't have to send any values to it. We just leave that blank, but functions still need parentheses. So there we go. So now, when the enemy is hit by a bullet, the enemy will die. See? Pretty simple right there. We want the same to happen to the bullet, and there's two ways we could do this. One could do... Well, one way we could just do the same thing. We open up the bullet, and we say, if I collide with an enemy, die. Which is fine. But just to, to show you some things, just to teach, let's go back in here. And let's say when the bullet collides, so we're going to now manipulate the bullet. Remember the width? Do you guys remember the width function here? The width statement, whatever you want to call it. So we're now going to say from the enemy's code, we're going to do this little width statement and hop inside the bullet code and write the same thing. If I could type. There. So now the bullet is being destroyed when it hits the enemy, but the enemy is telling it to do it with the with the with statement. Okay. So if we run the game, what should happen is the bullet should hit the enemy, and both the bullet and the enemy should go away. There we go. Perfect, right? Boop. Yeah, boop. Nice. Simple little game so far, right? Okay. Okay. Not bad. No way to really win or lose, and that's okay. I just want to show you kind of an example of the workflow. We got a few more things to worry about. We could worry about um, making it so you can't shoot all the time. There are a few ways to do that. And uh, yeah, let's 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 do it. Let's let's do it. No problem. Sorry, let me double click on it. We're gonna go in here and we're going to create another variable, and this is going to be called shot counter. And we'll just initialize this as zero. It doesn't need to... We need to initialize it with some sort of value. And you can do whatever you want, really. I'm choosing zero. I could choose negative one. I, I could choose it. Something that makes it null. I just need to tell GameMaker I want this variable to exist. But I'm not actually giving it a value yet. So zero is fine. And here's what's going to happen. Uh, we want to have... Oh, actually. We're going to have this really good one. This is a really good um, variable I use a lot called can shoot. I do that with like can move, can whatever. And we're going to say like, this is true. That's a boolean. Unlike a string, which is like words in a quotation, you know, the quote in the quotes, you got that. And, and a real, which is a real number, not imaginary. So that could be like a full integer, a whole number, you know, where it could be decimals, whatever. True and false are boolean. It has two, these two options in this in this case. So we have true and false. False is equal to zero and true is equal to one. So I could also alternate between zero and one but true and false. So what this is going to mean to me is that if can shoot is true I'm allowed to shoot because what we're doing is going to prevent the player from shooting. So first let's go back here. If you remember when I press space I'm going to create a bullet. But we, we don't want it to just, you know, the player can't spam the bullet. So what we're going to do is create an if statement. And we're going to check an if statement. We're going to put our conditions in a parentheses. And we're going to type can shoot. Now, 
the way code works is that if you're checking a statement that can return true or false, remember that's one or zero, you don't actually have to ta like ask if it's equal to equal to one. You don't have to say like, oh, if can shoot is equal to one. No, that doesn't matter. Is it equal to true? This, this doesn't matter. This means if it's equal to true. If if it it's kind of like checking its existence. If it, if it's true and then false, you can just put the not operator in front of it, that exclamation mark. So if not true, but we want to say if it's true. So good. When we press the space bar, if we are al allowed to shoot, then we shoot a bullet. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Then we do a few things. Now we make can shoot false. Now we can't shoot anymore. Oh no, but then we can only fire one bullet. True, but we're going to do alarms now. We're going to set alarm zero to equal um, shot counter. Now I didn't in initialize that, so we should probably give it some sort of timer. This is how many steps will elapse before we're allowed to shoot again. So we're going to make that one good way, actually, here, let me show you a really good variable. It's called room speed. We're not actually going to use that as is, but that's right here, your room speed, which is 30 steps per frame. 30, 30 steps happen per second or per frame. I don't quite remember off the top of my head. Um, but why it's important to call upon your room speed is if you ever play with your room speed or you ever play... Oh, oh, of course, stuck to me. I just got it now. It's a second. It's, it's before a second elapses or what the game thinks is a second. Lag can mess with that. But the reason for that is now we can use the multiplication symbol. And then we can use any number. And what this means is 30 steps right now are in a second. That means if we times it by 4, we're getting four seconds. So this actually, to at least you as a programmer, you understand quite easily and quite quickly this means four seconds. Now of course not being able to shoot for four seconds is ridiculous, but I thought I'd show that to you because we could just divide that by two and say half a second. So we could say every half second we're allowed to shoot again. Now we haven't finished that because if you remember we want alarm zero to equal half a second. Okay, what we're going to need is an event for alarm zero and what we need that to do is we need it to spell better we need it to allow shooting again so that means can shoot is now true again with a u so hopefully if i'm not completely stupid this should work i should now only be able there we go i can only shoot every half second So it's perfect. I can move left and right. I can shoot. I can only shoot every half second. Now, there's one problem. Do you see that? Do you see what happened? When I shoot there, if I have two bullets, bam. See that? See how with the with statement got rid of that bullet? It's a bad idea, right? Well, there are a few ways around that because I messed that up. Because I don't normally use it that way, <laughs> with that way. And it's not really a good idea. What we could do is instead of telling the game to say all bullet objects, right? We could just say, I hope, other. Let me just test that. But what that means is the other object that's involved, well, other instance that's involved in this, colli in, in this collision event, not just all of the instances of the bullet object. So, yeah, see, there we go. So it's just telling the other object to uh, die in this case. Now, because I want to kind of go through a little more of the workflow, uh, this is good for now. A few things I want to add. Number one, let's add sound. I've got some sounds prepped already. So let's do a sound for the bullet. And I'm going to load one. And I should have one prepped already. All my games there, wow. Let's, uh, bullet. Nothing fancy, I don't want to mess with it, just that's fine. So, let's go back into my player. And then, right here, when I'm creating a bullet, right in this in this code when it says can shoot, we're going to say, uh, audio play sound. Audio play music doesn't exist anymore. It's, I believe, deprecated. 
But we're going to play sound. Close that off before we go in. It's looking for at the bottom there. We can see sound ID. Okay, well the ID is sound bullet. That's what we called it. The priority. This is, um, computers have so many sound channels that you can actually use. And if it gets overloaded with too many sounds, it will drop sounds of the lowest priority. Um, so if we were like, oh, this sound is so important, it's so important, it's 100. So we can put numbers lower than that, like one, yeah, that's not a very important sound, drop it. But let's say our bullet sounds super important, so 100. <laughs> and now it wants to know whether we're going to loop it or not, true or false. Or, you know, one or zero if you wish. We don't want this sound to loop, false. It's just going to play once, and that's it. So now, I don't know if I'm recording sound, I, I might not be. That's kind of lame. <laughs> now it should play sounds. Yes, it does. So there, that's how we add a sound to the game. That's kind of nice. One more thing I want to do before we go. Now, of course, I can add paths, and I can help you with scripts and fonting the game. But like I said, this is just kind of... I felt this was necessary before going into all of the game maker functions. I just kind of want to show you a really quick workflow um, for setting up your, your files and, and whatnots. Uh, one last thing I kind of want to do, just for fun. I'm going to create a background, but really I'm going to create a... Let's call it... This is actually going to be... Yeah, you know what? It's going to be a background. I'm going to call it Stars. And we're going to create just a simple background like this. And we're just going to dot it randomly with some white dots. There we go. And why we're going to do that, let's collapse all this. Why we're doing that is we're going to... Yep, expand that. Okay, we're going to go into our background and we're going to go to... Um, I believe when we're going to, yeah, background zero, I think. I don't know if that's going to, it won't overwrite that. It's fine. That's why we're drawing the color. This will be visible when the room starts. So now it's bolded to say that, yes, this is going to be visible. Uh, I don't think we need it as a foreground. We can put it behind these images because we want stars in the background. Now, of course, that's lame just to have stars. Let's turn off the grid and take a look at it. You can, first of all, clearly see that it's a terrible tile because I made it in a, like a couple seconds. But the only reason I want to do that is I kind of want to start moving them. You know what I'm saying? Wait, that's not moving. That's shifting them. Here's the speed. Uh, eight. Cause I don't know, everything has a speed of eight. So let's give it a shot. I didn't have to close that, but I did. Alright. So this should be moving to the right. Really fast! That's Back to the Future. Alright, so anyway, I don't know why Back to the Future for Space Invaders. So anyway, that's uh, nauseating. But, uh, I hope you got a sense of workflow. I just, I, I know I didn't really want to show any specific genre or how to program things that are very, very particular or specific. There are YouTubers who do that. There are uh, the Game Maker community, Reddit, whatever. Tons of places where you can ask people very specific things. I just want to teach the software, but I did feel that I, I glossed over kind of uh, a complete workflow. And like I said, I kind of wanted just a little reminder of the things we've been learning so far before I teach you all of the built-in functions and show you how these functions interact uh, or, like, or, or how they manifest when you actually run your game. So that's the next playlist. That's coming up. Sorry this video is full of burps. No, sorry this video is really long. But, uh, hey, game making uh, doesn't happen overnight. Uh, unless you do game jams. But anyway, um, yeah, so enjoy the playlist when it's out, guys.